we celebrate today the feast of the nativity or the birth of our blessed mother. The feast of the immaculate conception, which is a dogma, is celebrated on the 8th of December. That means on the 8th of December we celebrate that our blessed mother was conceived immaculately in the womb of her mother. So she was conceived in the womb of her mother on December 8th and the gestation period for a human being in the womb of its mother is around nine months. And so nine months later, that is today, the 8th of September, we celebrate the feast of the nativity or the birth or the bringing into the world of our blessed mother. The point we must keep in mind is this. That when the church chooses a reading on the nativity of our blessed mother from the gospel of Matthew, which speaks about two things, the genealogy of Jesus and the birth of Jesus, it indicates that whatever importance Mary has, whatever importance we give to our blessed mother is given because cause of her son. It is her son being brought into the world by her which makes us look at her own life and see how she herself would be immaculately conceived if she brought forth our Lord immaculately. And that is why even though Matthew will begin his genealogy in Matthew chapter 1 verses 1 to 17 with these words that Abraham was the father of Isaac and Isaac was the father of Jacob and keeps on going through three generations of 14 each. What he says at the end is Jacob was the father of Joseph. Joseph was not the father of Jesus. Here alone of all the names, Matthew makes a change. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. So if Abraham was the father of Isaac and Isaac was the father of Jacob, Joseph is not the father of Jesus. Joseph is the husband of Mary. So in other words, Joseph is the foster father. Mary is the mother. And so today we celebrate that nativity of our blessed mother because of the nativity of her son. And in the verses which follow, we are told about the birth and we are given an insight into the fidelity of Joseph when we are told about the birth, how Joseph is told that even though he has had no relation with his betrothed, the one to whom he was engaged, she will bear a son whom he must call Jesus. And so, as we reflect on the nativity of our blessed mother, what can we reflect on? What can we say about the qualities of her life? We can say, first of all, that she is the one who teaches us the meaning of openness, who teaches us the meaning of receptivity. Even as we reflect on her response to the angel, even as we reflect on her response to life, what we reflect on is this, that she remained constantly open, whether it was to the announcement at the, of the angel, whether it was at the presentation when she presented her child at the temple and Simeon made that prophecy about him, whether when the child was lost in the temple and she was not able to understand what he was saying, whether when people were telling her that your son has gone out of his mind, whether at the wedding at Cana, whether when standing at the foot of the cross, at every moment of her son's life, she accompanied him, she was there with him and she was open to whatever revelation God would make. 
She would not prompt God to do what she wanted to do. But like her son prayed at Gethsemane and possibly because he was taught by his mother, she remained open to do God's will rather than to ask God to do her will. The second aspect of our blessed mother is her concern for everyone and the whole of humanity. This is seen so beautifully in the miracle at Cana. When we experience the miracle at Cana, what we realize is this, that the mother of Jesus is at the wedding and Jesus and his disciples are at the wedding and even as Jesus and his disciples are there, Mary realizes that they have run out of wine. Now it could be very embarrassing for the groom, it could be very embarrassing for the bridal party that the goods are not available, that the refreshment is not available. It would be scandalous, people would be talking about it. And Mary, possibly because she would have been related to the family or even if she was not, the point is she is aware. So Mary is aware that they have no wine. And what does Mary do? Mary acts on this awareness. She doesn't simply keep the awareness to herself. She doesn't say, okay, I'm aware and I'm helpless. I can't do nothing. No, no. She says, I can do what I have to do. And she approaches her son. And even as she approaches her son, she is aware that he can work the miracle if he wants, but she is also aware that she must allow him the freedom to respond as he wants to respond. And so, she makes no request. She makes no petition. She does not ask him for anything. She only points to the situation which she is aware of. So, the action that she takes is, to point her son out to the situation, they have no wine. And the first response of Jesus is to respond in a seemingly harsh manner. And the reason why Jesus is seemingly harsh is because for Jesus, the Father's will was the priority. And no one not even his mother could come between him and the father's will. And that is why he responds in a distancing manner. Please do not involve me. I have come not to do the will of people. I have come to do my father's will. And if the father's will says that I must do this, then I will. But you cannot intervene. You cannot interfere. You cannot come between me and my father's will. My hour has not yet come. The hour which is set by the father. And even though the hour has not come, even though it was not the appointed hour for Jesus to work, because his mother pointed to the situation without a request, without a petition, without asking him to work a miracle, he does turn water into wine. G.K. Chesterton, summarizing the miracle at Cana, says very beautifully, the water saw its master and blushed into sparkling wine. So Mary is a woman who will point our situation out to the Lord. And the third is the courage. The courage where in the Gospel of John itself, when everyone else would have disappeared, when people would be looking from far away, when the disciples were nowhere in sight, Mary is standing by the foot of the cross, John chapter 19. Verses 25 to 27. She beholds her son. She has brought him up. She has nurtured him. She has given him the values that he has. 
She has set him on the path of justice, of truth and of righteousness. And now because he stood for justice, because he stood for truth, because he stood for righteousness, he hangs on the cross. And she beholds him and stands there, not despondently, not dejectedly. She stands there courageously. The fact that she can be so close to a seeming criminal, to one who was crucified like a criminal, is an indication that she does not give up on her son. She perseveres and is courageous. And it is at the cross that she is handed over not merely to the historical beloved disciple. No, she is handed over to everyone and anyone who loves Jesus. So if you love Jesus, if you are a beloved disciple, one who loves Jesus, that is who a beloved disciple is, you cannot but love his mother. He hands over his mother to every beloved disciple where he says, this is your mother. And he hands over every one of us when he says to his mother, these are your sons and daughters. So the three aspects of our blessed mother are aspects that we can reflect on on her birthday, on her nativity, and ask her to abstain the same for us. The first is her openness. The first is her receptivity. And openness and receptivity are a gift which will be given by our Blessed Mother through her intercession if we make whatever effort we can to live like her in the present moment. It is true that because of our openness and receptivity, we might hear the Lord ask us to do challenging things, to do things which are difficult. And yet, and yet, we can do them because of the grace which she will obtain for us. The second is, to be like her in our awareness of the needs of others. She was aware of the needs of the bridal party. And when we are aware of the needs of those around us, we act on it. She acted on it. Her action was to point out the situation and ours might be, or ours might be to petition, or ours might be to reach out physically in need. Whatever it is, we need to act on our awareness like she did. And the third is to take her into our hearts, to take her into our homes, because the Lord gives her to us and to realize that it was never known that anyone who fled to our Blessed Mother's protection was left unaided. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother now and ask for these intentions and ask for her grace. Let us sing to her on this birthday, on this nativity, as we would sing to our own mothers. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mary. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you and Jesus too. Happy birthday, dear Mary. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to our blessed mother. Have a wonderful day.